What's going on guys? This is Marty's Brigade 99 coming to you once again with another session of Dark Souls PvP. Alright guys, we're back at it with the awesome Surge. Now if you guys watched part one, you know, we basically uh, talked about his build uh, for which he has a heck of a lot of fire surges. Right? But now that we're in part two, he kind of let go of you know his fire uh, surge part of the build and now he's kind of getting more into the serious PvP now this is not to say that he wasn't serious before but um, the reason why I make it a point to uh, uh, talk about the seriousness of it is because uh, he kind of left me a communication saying basically dude this is my troll build right so now I think he's kind of into his plan B for which I'm basically going to be in trouble. He's pretty good with the, you know, with the uh, uh, cast cancels. And yeah, I mean, if you guys notice, he's kind of spinning left and right, you know, canceling cast and canceling force, canceling. I mean, he's kind of doing all those high speed tactics for which I'm not really at that point yet. <laughs> right. But listen, guys, to the extent that you're kind of new, right, or you're not all that of a hotshot PvP or like myself. <laughs> Right, because I'm definitely not on the hot shot level. Do not get intimidated when you see these guys with these hot shot moves, right? Because sometimes, you know, I've even noticed it, right? Basically, from kind of listening to chats on the streams or perhaps even listening to what the streamers are saying. Sometimes, when you kind of see some case in point, uh, shout out to good old RB Frosty. He's one of those hotshot guys. I kind of watched him on the stream. I think it was uh, Dark Lord Sins, one of his streams. Shout out to good old Dark Lord Sins. But he was on the stream on PC. And dude, RB Frosty has got this build where I think he's a soul level 100. He's not even rocking the shield, and he has a rapier. And I think uh, not only does he uh, not only does he use um, sorceries, but I. I think he uses either pyromancy or miracles and that's an intimidating build right mainly because he does a lot of flipping he's awesome at that roll BSing and he's really good at those cast cancels right so playing against somebody like you know RB Frosty and uh, you guys will see uh, some of these fancy dancy tactics the good old awesome sauce is doing you kind of have an invader running at you and he's just kind of turning around and, you know, canceling cast left and right. It can be intimidating. But don't be afraid, guys. And this is especially for you newer dudes, right? Because I know some of you experienced guys, you may run into players like this. But don't be intimidating. If these guys are kind of, you know, canceling casts, you know, and spinning around and flipping around you left and right, don't be intimidated. Just kind of let them go through their, because in actually, in most cases, they're trying to intimidate you, and they're trying to throw you off. Don't get, <laughs> right, don't get confused. That was a super lag backstab right there. Right out of, and obviously out of no fault of his own, but that was pretty laggy because, as you guys can see from yourself, I was not close to that guy when I got that BS. But it is what it is. But like I was saying, when you guys notice these high-speed tactics, do not get intimidated. Sit back, you know. Don't be quick to engage. Sit back, let them do their performance with the quick cancels, right? Because if you try to engage them. They will be drawing you into their tactics. Now, what exactly do I mean drawing you in? Basically, they want you to engage them. Right? They want you to come after them because they know exactly what they're doing and you don't. <laughs> right? That's why they're trying to trick you with the cancels. I've noticed a lot of those guys, especially who are kind of hot shot with those Wrath of God uh, cancels. They are good at playing Unlocked right they know uh, when they're faking you out and they know that after a certain amount of time they're going to laugh or they're going to land the wrath of gods and that's the whole purpose of the canceling the cast cancels they're trying to trick you 
right? Because they figure if they fake you out enough times that eventually they're going to get a successful hit with the castings. Right? So just don't be afraid. Sit back. Let them put on their performance. Let them cancel. Let them cast. Let them flip around you. Keep a distance. Keep your shield up. Be ready to engage once they approach. Right? So shout out to all those uh, aforementioned uh, hot shot players. Now, guys like RB Frosty, I mean, now that guy, he's kind of intimidating. Uh, at least what I've seen. I've never played him, right? But I think either he's on Xbox or maybe he's just on PC. But I would love to play that guy. I don't know if he's on PS3. I don't even know if he checks out my vids, but I know I've kind of watched his chat. And I've also watched him perform on other people's chats. But dude, if you got PS3, hey, shoot me a note. Now, I mean, I might kind of get the crap beat out of me with regard to your PvP, but, I mean, so what, right? <laughs> Who cares about losing? I just care about getting better. If any of you guys are familiar with my channel, you would know that I am not, uh, I do not make a big deal about losing because I actually lose a lot. I mean, and not only do I lose a lot, you know, right? I don't have an ego trip to the extent to where I will not post my losses. Think about it. I have a few videos where I got beat to a pulp. Um, one more recent example um, is the video titled Crushed by a Tank, right? For which I was fighting against good old Hell Servant 23. I think I only beat that guy twice in the like 25 minute video. I think it's 20, 25 minutes, right? But that's just an example of the show. Look, in the brigade, we don't care about losing. Because everybody's going to lose. Right? I'm not one of these uploaders that are kind of high and mighty on this ego trip about, look how much of a hot shot I am. No. And that's why I focus more so on commentaries. Right now, some of these, what I would call entertainers, they care more so about the image and how they appear. I've learned a long time ago you might not want to create a situation wherein you're giving people the impression that you're just kind of invincible, right? Because when you do and people beat you, they will rub it in the ground, right? They will rub it in the ground like, yeah, do I beat you? You're nothing. You're this and you're that. But when you kind of sit back and think about it, right, it's not that it's really a big deal that you lost. The big deal comes in the fact that you have created a situation Whereas you project yourself to be almost invincible, right? And that's why I think, to the extent that you guys have uh, YouTube channels and to the extent that you guys upload, it's a good idea to present more of a realistic uh, picture of yourself with regard to PvP. I know everyone likes to see wins. I know everyone likes to see, I mean, just parries left and right and all these fancy dancy tactics. But I have yet to meet, right, a large population of players that just beats everybody all the time. Now, granted, you may have your first tier players, right, some of your peps, your Valks. I know, uh, now I've, I've seen Valk run through a lot of people. He, he's kind of like on that first tier level. Those are levels like above me. You know, you have guys like that, but for the most part, you know, players like me, average players, second string, maybe even noobs, we lose a lot, right? So, like I said before, in the brigade, we don't care about losing. We just care about getting better, right? So, enough about that. Um, so, back to the original point of good old RB Frosty is on the console. Hey, dude, shoot me a message. I love to play you. But as far as what I've seen, I think either he's only on Xbox or PC. Or maybe just based upon the footage that I've seen, he's only been on PC. Right? So if you're on PS3, come on, dude, let's have some matches. All right, so enough about good old RB Frosty and his fancy dancy canceling techniques. Now, kind of talk about Roll BS. Um, Roll BSers, I have kind of started to experiment with certain tactics against Roll BSers. Right? And from what I have uh, seen 
experienced and listened to, right, from some of these hotshot road BSers themselves. From what I've heard, some of those guys will say, dude, you just can't be so predictable, quote, unquote. So predictable is kind of, I don't don't really know about that, right? Because like I've said in the past, a good role BSer, in other words, let me kind of say it this way. When you're good at doing something, right? It's not necessarily that you are exploiting weaknesses. You're taking advantage of something that you do well, right? Case in point. Let's say, for the sake of argument, I'm, you know, pretty decent at pairing, right? But I only look for opportunities to parry. That's a lot different than me exploiting an R1 spammer. It's a lot different. It's one thing for me to say, hey, I mean, the guy just keep R1 spamming, so I'll exploit that. It's another thing, you know, to the extent, I mean, let's just say you're so much of a parry god that, I mean, you could just walk up to anybody and parry and, you know, kind of like with a 90% success rate. It's one thing to say, well, hey, I mean, I punished the guy. I mean, look at him. He just R1 spams. Or, hey, I mean, I punished the guy because every single time he rolls, he rolls and then he attacks. So, I mean, those are just punishes. It's one thing to say that you're punishing. It's another thing to be so good at something to where you interpret every opportunity as an opportunity to do it. You guys just noticed that combo? I didn't have a chance. (laughs) Right? But be that as it may, based upon what I've experienced, when you guys notice that you're faced against a Robieser, you might want to have as a secondary weapon either a painting guardian sword, a Quelag fury sword, a falcon, or a, you know, some people pronounce it scimitar. One of those. You might want to have one of those as a secondary weapon. Now, I am not so confident to where I would say it's foolproof at this point, but what I will say is I've been experimenting with having some of those fast swinging weapons as a secondary weapon once I notice I'm with one of those ninja flipping Roby as dudes right and I've gotten a pretty decent amount of success now I will not at this point say that it's a counter only because I've had a little bit of success I would need a little more experience fighting against some of these Roby esters before I can say you know what I've tried it enough times and look when you fight against these guys this is what you do but what I will say, some of you guys are kind of facing against roll BSers. May it be, you know, you're using a strength build, a dexterity build. Once you notice it, I would suggest for you to have as a secondary weapon, a uh, Quelag Fury Sword, Falcon, um, Gold Tracer, one of these fast swinging weapons. Because what I have seen, what I have noticed is that uh, these weapons tend to follow your opponent, right? And with them swinging so fast, in some cases, either you will inflict damage or you will negate the damage. Thereby, just basically no one takes damage even though they may go through the BS animation. For which, both instances is good. I mean, both instances are good, right? Because at the end of the day, you just don't like the damage. Now, granted, it may look sloppy, but, you know, who really cares if, you know, you just kind of negate the damage, I don't really care, as long as I don't get the BS damage. Alright, so some of you guys are going to have problems with the roll BSers as much as I have problems with them. I mean, that's just one suggestion. Maybe I need to experiment a little more. Um, there's another another suggestion for which I kind of touched on last week. You know, there's a guy, he's got this high-speed video with him using uh, Arm of Thorn pieces, which is good, right? But like I said before, although it is a tactic, the only reason why I don't really uh, talk a lot about that tactic is because not everybody wants to use an arm of thorn piece. But, I mean, you know, 
now that I'm talking about it, some might say the, the same thing for what I suggested with regard to the secondary weapon. Some guys may say, dude, I mean, my build is not designed for secondary weapons. All I can say is this with regard to the Rogue DS yes tactics and with regard to those who make me as frustrated as I am with those Rogue DS yes tactics. Um, listen, dude, you might not, your build might not be designed for, you know, uh, wielding two weapons. Or you may not want to use Armor of Thorns with all of your builds. But you might need to be mindful that there are a lot of tactics out there. And to the extent that you are in a tournament, a fight club, or you're just doing, you know, PvP in the Berg, or the Moonlight Pit, or the uh, Ulusil Township, just keep in mind that eventually you will run into one of these guys. And to run away from them is not going to better your chances at defeating them. Coming up with counters is the best. Well, at least what I would say is the best thing in trying to defeat them. Right, because Lord knows I get frustrated when I'm facing him. And actually, I mean, you'll notice I think I got roll BS twice in this video. But see, you know, I didn't get frustrated with it because that's not his primary tactic. If you guys notice in this whole two part series, whenever I got roll BS, I mean, it was just a roll BS, but it was not his primary tactic. So let me not, you know, kind of confuse things. It's not that I hate. Roll BS, which I mean, I kind of do hate it, <laughs> right? But it's not that I'm 100% against it. I hate fighting the guys who use Roll BS as a primary method of engagement. That's what it is, right? Because I have faced several guys that they won't Roll BS for a punish, they'll Roll BS you like three and four times within one match. And I think it's fair to argue, when you get roll BS three or four times, or, you know, maybe in some cases two, depending upon what kind of weapon they use, and depending upon, you know, the amount of damage that a BS can inflict, you know, I think it's kind of reasonable to say, come on, dude, you're using that as a, as a primary method of engagement. That's when I hate it, right? Now, like I said before, good old Awesome Sauce, he roll BS me a couple times in this video. Right? But was it a big deal? No. Because if you guys notice, he employs a lot of tactics. Tons of them. So he was not using it as a primary method of engagement. So I think it's kind of important to make that distinction because, I mean, granted, I don't necessarily care about the guys who say, oh, you cry about this, oh, you care about that. But what I do like to do is clarify things because I think good communication is good. Right? It's good. And uh, I think there's a difference between clarification and justification. Because I've heard some guys even say, dude, you don't have to justify anything to anybody. Yes, I do understand that. And I don't need to justify anything to anybody. But at the same time, I do think uh, clarification, uh, it's a good thing. And, I mean, you know, a lot of you young guys, you may, know, you may not know this at the time. But, I mean, hey, I'm married. <laughs> Right, so best believe you will definitely learn. Either you will learn with success, or you, you know, will become a statistic, <laughs> right? A negative statistic. But best believe you will learn as you get older that communication is good. So there's definitely a difference between justifying things that you do, you know, and always having to, you know, offer explanations. And just simply saying, well, actually, I just want to clarify things so there's no misunderstanding. Big difference. Right, so that's my take on Roll BS. It's not necessarily that I hate it in all instances, but I do hate it the most when people only use it as a primary method of engagement. All right, so enough about that. Now, um, I hope you guys have enjoyed the footage so far, and I think you guys can attest that good old Awesome Sauce, he's pretty good at those uh, pyro pyromancy castings, um, especially when he's using the Chaos Fireball, because think about it, 
to the extent that you're not necessarily all that hot at aiming with the fireball the fact that he's throwing down the chaos fireball kind of helps because let's just say you miss with the blast but the lava is still there so you might hit with the fireball itself but you may also inflict damage with you know um, um, in those occasions that your opponent is standing in the lava for which that has happened to me a number of times right he might hit me with the fireball itself but perhaps you know just a smidgen of a second I get inflicted with damage because I'm standing in the lava now here's another thing when you guys are in the moonlight butterfly forest and you guys are invading listen dude try your hardest not to run in the area of the stone giants because it is very frustrating when you invaders come in and you also draw uh, the attention of the stone giants like don't do that that is really annoying I really hate it when an invader comes in and they run right over there in the areas where the stone giants are and your PvP matches have to be interrupted because just a few seconds later there's a rising tide of stone giants come to attack you you know then later on they'll say my bad dude listen here's how to avoid it stay clear from them as long as you stay clear from them more than likely they won't get up and pursue the host all right just a little food for thought and i know it's not always intentional but i also know that in some cases the trolls make it a point to do that right because i've done it before right maybe a guy that maybe hornet ring me or something like that and once i see that i invade him i say oh okay well guess what i know how to be annoying too so I make it a point to go to every stone giant, thereby making them stand up and, you know, pursue the host. Right, because in the brigade we can be annoying too. Right. Well, alright guys, this is pretty much the end of the two-part series. I'd like to give a shout out once again for the PvP matches against good old Awesome Sauce. Perhaps we can do it again sometime in the future. I hope you guys enjoy the two-part series. So, I mean, this is pretty much it. I guess I won't really talk about the remainder of this match. So, until next time, Marty's Brigade is...